Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this interview is being conducted by the Sierra Leone Era Tribune and the Leone Club of New Jersey. The producer of this program is Mr. Amjad Jalomi Ba. Good afternoon, Ms. Isata Kabia. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to have you back in uh, New Jersey. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, on behalf of um, Sierra Leone and Sierra Leone, New Jersey, I would like to extend to you a hearty welcome and to wish you quite a pleasant uh, vacation. Now, there has been much discussion among Sierra Leoneans in the diaspora regarding the office of the diaspora affairs created in 19, I mean, in 2000, immediately after the 2007 election. Can you tell us why this office was created by the president? The Office of Diaspora Affairs um, was created to harness diaspora knowledge, capacity, uh, financial capacity, and skills towards Sierra Leone's socioeconomic development. The initial funding for the office came from Hewlett Packard and OSI, and that fund was actually being managed by UNDP. The intent was to implement a capacity building project. The capacity building project was implemented in October 2008. The Office of Diaspora Affairs was charged with bringing in 35 experts into critical areas in the Syrian public sector. We targeted diaspora expertise purposely because we know that diaspora are emotionally invested in Sierra Leone, so we can actually maximize on utilizing their skills at a lower cost. The areas we targeted were the priority areas such as Ministry of Health, Education, Support Ministries such as Tourism and Mineral Resources, and also Energy and Water Resources. In the end, we brought in, we were successful in bringing in 24 diaspora contributors into about 10 ministries. In the area of health, for example, we had six placements, from health information officers to an ICU specialist doctor, who was not only in charge of the ICU at Connaught, but she was also in charge of teaching nurses in the ICU department, um, specifically in the area of administering anesthesiology before surgery. In energy and power, we have um, a lady, Dr. Yvette Stevens, who was responsible in rewriting and finalizing the energy policy. In um, lands, we had two experts, a GIS specialist, a geographical imaging specialist, who has been critical in really enabling the ministry to digi digitize the land records. Um, so we can move away from duplication and double selling of land and I believe if we really go a long way in um, developing the land sector, we'll be able to reduce poverty and um, just by increasing the surety of ownership through digitized records. We also have, um, of those 24 experts, actually we have 14 that are still on duty. In Ministry of Health, again, for example, we have a specialist psychiatric nurse. We actually tried to bring in a psychiatrist into Ministry of Health because we only have one in country, Dr. Naeem. Um, but we were able to recruit a diaspora specialist nurse in the area of psychiatry who has really done a tremendous job in revamping the hospital, the mental health hospital at Kisi, but also in bringing attention to the plight of the inmates there and attracting funding for medicines and medical equipment. Now, you've been working in this office for about three years now. Can you describe to us the structure of this office? Who are the people? that constitute this office and what capacity do you operate in? Well, the structure has changed a couple of times during the course of the two years, um, based on need, of course, but also based on available funding. Um, there was initially a director who also doubled as a project manager when the capacity building project was launched. There was an office manager and a logistics officer and an administrative secretary. Um, we, in recent times, we've gone to a point where the office has really a skeletal, a skeletal crew and I think it hurts the potential for us to implement the kind of projects we should be implementing. So we're now trying to restructure the office to ensure that we have the um, requisite crew 
to actually implement projects to facilitate and channel diaspora contributions and to ensure that the diaspora office and the diaspora community itself is a central part and plays a key role in um, towards Sierra Leone's development. I am currently Special Assistant Diaspora Affairs um, in lieu of an actual substantive director. But I'm taking care of the office along with the deputy director and an administrative assistant. We are in the process of recruiting a focused communications person as well as a financial manager. All right, thank you for this information, which I think uh, would be of immense benefit to the audience. Now, what are some of the challenges that you currently face in this office? Well, um, as I said, the understanding is that the project, the office was opened up as a project unit and was charged specifically with implementing the capacity building program. We are now trying to restructure the office and really transform it into a full diaspora initiative. By that, I'm really focusing on the examples we see in Ghana and Nigeria. Um, we have models that work and we have models we can leverage off of. I believe Africa as a whole, we are more inclined to talk to the West and talk to countries across the seas and less inclined to talk to our neighbors. And if we do more of that, I think we can really leverage on our lessons learned so we don't have to repeat the same mistakes and enhance the experience of harnessing diaspora expertise. In Nigeria, I think they've had a great success and their model is to actually endorse a non-governmental diaspora entity, NIDO, Nigerians in the Diaspora Organization, which has been instrumental in um, bringing in new human resource capacity into Nigeria to a point where now I think their main focus is really about strengthening private sector and strengthening investments. In preparation for the 50th anniversary celebration of our country's independence, many Sierra Leoneans from the diaspora will be traveling home to witness this very historic moment. What is the Office of the Diaspora doing in anticipation of this huge presence of people from the diaspora? In anticipation of the diaspora visitors, we're actually organizing a homecoming summit. So from Monday, April 18th, we have an investment forum at Mieta Conference Center. This is really about bringing businesses and financial institutions together to bring information and share information with the diaspora communities on existing businesses that they can invest in, on new opportunities such as tourism, and also to bring the financial institutions who could be the potential um, financiers for such businesses. On Tuesday, the 19th of April, we have a tour guide of the city. We're planning to take diaspora visitors around Freetown to showcase our historic sites as well as our natural sites. And as much as we may think that Sierra Leoneans know what these sites are, we find that when we do go home to visit, we stay with families traditionally and we don't go around the traditional tourist sites. So by showcasing that, we're hoping to attract the diaspora as tourists, but also to attract diaspora into investing in tourism. Um, by doing so, we'll actually create an economic culture that will be more sustainable throughout the year and also create jobs within communities. On the third day, on the 20th, we actually have a job fair and as much as we don't want to be seen as a job agency for diaspora, that is not the idea. What we've done, we've actually contacted companies such as ADAX, London Mining, African Minerals, and larger NGOs within the country to ensure that they identify skills among Sierra Leoneans before they bring in expatriates. If that skill cannot be identified within Sierra Leoneans locally, we are encouraging them to do so among Sierra Leonean communities abroad. So while the diaspora is in country in April, we're going to conduct the job fair so that we can actually assist them um, in finding a job if they're interested in returning home. But also we believe that by having those people in country, even in the private sector, we can leverage off their skills in other areas as well. All right, very recently, allegations have been made against um, the director of the Diaspora Affairs regarding the 50th anniversary celebration. Does, he, does this relate to, to the functions of the Office of the Diaspora Affairs? Not directly. It relates to the Office of Diaspora Affairs only in as much as he was also the substantive director. But the actual allegations are to do with his office within the chairmanship of Sierra Leone at 50 celebrations. 
and those do not have anything to do with the office. Um, I believe as a returnee, he also represents the diaspora community, but the office itself was not um, involved in that particular incident. All right, so thank you for throwing light on this uh, unfortunate uh, development regarding the Office of Diaspora Affairs vis-à-vis the 50th anniversary celebration. Now, going forward, what does the Office of Diaspora plan to do? What we, our role, our particular role as an office is to harness and maximize diaspora contributions, as I said earlier. Um, we want to harness diaspora financial and um, knowledge capacity. We want to maximize these contributions towards Sierra Leone's development. That's our ultimate objective. The road we have to take to ensure that we can do that needs to be very carefully charted out. Currently, there's no policy on diaspora engagement. That is one tangible that has to change. The policy will have to be developed specifically on diaspora engagement. We'll also have to identify within those other policies that would strengthen investments from diaspora, um, issues that will address the perceived barriers to investment and contribution, for example, corruption, lack of infrastructure, but also the intangibles. And by that, I mean trust and expectations. There has to be a greater level of trust within diaspora communities amongst themselves, but also between diaspora and Serenians at home, between diaspora and government. We need to better manage expectations. At this point in time, we do know that we have a great potential amongst diaspora con um, communities. This is not measurable. And because governments don't know how to measure this potential, they're reluctant to fully put greater resources behind harnessing it. We need to know how many diasporas actually exist within these communities. Um, the diaspora community has been called the fifth region by the president, and it's actually bigger and more expansive than the other four regions contained within Sierra Leone, because the fifth region includes North America, South America, Europe, and closer to home, even within Africa. The population of this community is not as um, great as the population of the four regions within Sierra Leone, obviously, but because it's spread so far and wide, it makes it really more difficult to target and to address. Um, I'm on this outreach campaign so that people can know really what we are about, so people can get more involved in making this a fully um, developed diaspora office, yeah. so we can better utilize their skills, and so they themselves can better utilize the office to channel their own agendas. Um, we want to serve the diasporas. We want to serve them within their host country so they're comfortable, but also to ensure that their contributions towards Sierra Leone are facilitated in a way that it makes it easier for contributions towards development. Now, this office is still um, located in the office of the president. Is that true? Yes, um, we are physically located in State House, and um, we are also within the office of the president because we're under the office of the chief of staff. We do have an office that they've allocated to us outside of State House, and I think this will go a long way to making it more accessible to diaspora visitors, and it makes sense so everybody within the Sierra Leonean communities abroad recognizes that this office is there for them. Um, we will be shortly re relocated to Wesley Street off Padimbo Road within the PSRU, the Public Sector Unit. Um, and I think this will really make sure that people see this as their office. Considering the role the diaspora office is playing, what distinction can you make between your office and, and that of the embassies? embassies? Well, traditionally embassies are more geared towards um, harnessing contributions from host countries. But with the new age diplomacy, obviously with the increased migration, you do get embassies that are proactive in also harnessing their flock abroad. And our embassy in Washington and the ambassador, I think, has done a great job in doing that um, by all the reports I got from the people I spoke to since I've been here. Um, there's not really a clear distinction. There should be collaboration. So the work they do should enhance our work and vice versa. 
um, what we find is that the nexus between migration and development is clearly defined. And we, as Sierra Leoneans and Sierra Leone, we really need to make sure that we maximize that. So the, um, the ambassador has reached out to his community, and the community is really appreciative that he's involved them in um, embassy issues and events. And they, in turn, have responded and made the embassy their own. Um, this will really work in our favor because we're trying to know how many Sierra Leoneans actually reside abroad. And that's the first question we need to answer in any kind of program we want to implement. So he has gathered them and let them know that the office is theirs and they should utilize it more. What we're trying to do in the transformative plan is to actually have focal persons at each embassy and mission. Um, in Leo, having a separate diaspora office where diaspora centers actually exist, we want to have a focal person at the embassy in the first instance to address diaspora affairs and all diaspora issues. And then going forward, maybe we can have our own separate diaspora offices. Uh, my name is Saidi and today I'm a member of um, Serial First Watch. Um, my question is um, whether the office, uh, the office of diaspora affairs has a shadow counterpart in the opposition party, like the yes, office today. Did they appoint someone to understudy or to follow your activities to create efficiency? Um, the Office of Diaspora Affairs actually does not have a shadow counterpart um, because there is no opposition. This office and the officers are serving all Sierra Leoneans. It's not politically motivated. We're trying to harness all Sierra Leoneans' contributions from abroad and we're actually facilitating agendas for all Sierra Leoneans from abroad. There's no opposition at all. This is not a political party office. It's an office that's really there to enhance um, contributions from diaspora communities. And the end objective is about Sierra Leone socioeconomic development. Um, I think being close to the presidency um, when it was first established was a great move because it really made people know how seriously His Excellency took the initiative, how um, really to his heart he took the diaspora community and their potential contributions for Sierra Leone. Um, like I said, we are going to be relocating outside of State House um, to make the office more accessible to visiting uh, diaspora, but also to local communities so they can better understand the office and our program, so they can be better informed about our own initiatives. Wow. My, 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 the, 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 you know, my question was the concern about other things that, for, that um, the, that particular office only caters to a particular um, set of party loyalists as opposed to the entire diaspora itself. Um, that people who are active in that particular diaspora uh, activity that are ongoing in the community or in the diaspora are mainly those that are I think I think the the really crucial part that we need to address and the really crucial question we need to address is the fact that if this office is not legislated um, if and when governments change will they actually see it fit to continue the office, to carry on the band of the office? So I think the important thing is to ensure that the diaspora office is legislated. So regardless of which political party is in power, regardless of which government is in the seat, um, our, really our interests are protected as diaspora communities and um, our agendas are really made a central part of development. And that's something we need to do together. As Sierra Leone Policy Watch, I think that's an issue that maybe Sierra Leone Policy Watch can um, really champion. Okay. Thank you for your well, questions. Thank you, uh, Miss Isita Kabia, for this very enlightening and illuminating discussion regarding the Office of Diaspora Affairs. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to clear up the misconceptions and to properly inform the public. Um, this interview has been conducted by Mr. Sheku Dauda Nagura, editor of the Sierra Leone Era Tribune in New Jersey.